All right, so now on absorption probabilities, this is also known as heating probabilities, okay? So in this session, I'm going to use um, an example to illustrate the concept of absorption or heating probabilities, okay? So let us consider the Markov chain in figure six with the following transition probability matrix. So this is going to be the state transition diagram that we are going to make use of, okay? All right. And this is a corresponding transition probability matrix. Now, suppose we define alpha index ij to be the vector of absorption probabilities in an absorbing state j, starting from state i. In other words, if we are to write alpha index 1 for, it means that we are looking at a transition probability from state 1 to an absorbing state 4. So in here, we are trying to use a different notation to distinguish it from the normal transition probability from one state to another, which is given by P index IJ. We are trying to use alpha to show that the transition is from a particular state to an absorbing state, okay? So if we are to write this, it means that we are looking at the transition probability from state two to an absorbing state four, okay? And this also means that we are looking at transition probability from state three to an absorbing state four. And this also means we are looking at transition probability from an absorbing state to itself, okay? Now take note that we have two absorbing states, state one and state four, but we, are, we just want to use state four as an example for now, okay? We can decide to make use of state one as well, okay? All right, and don't be confused with the absorption and absorbing here. Yeah, we are trying to use absorption because we are going to have a vector of probabilities, okay? So we are not just focusing on the absorbing probability, but we're also looking at the transition from other state to the absorbing state so that we can get all those probabilities, okay? This is basically what I mean. We don't want to focus on only just these probabilities, but want to look at a transition from this state to the absorbing state, okay? We just want to look at a transition from this state to this state, what to be that, what to be that probability, okay? That's basically what we want to take into consideration. All right. So now by definition of an absorbing state, we can deduce that the transition probability from state one to the absorbing state four is going to be zero. And we can check this one out from the transition diagram, okay? You can see that the transition from this state to this state is not possible, so it's going to be zero, okay? And you can also deduce that the transition probability from state four, that is the absorbing state to itself is going to be one. And you can see that from here, that the transition from this state to itself is one, okay? All right. So now, how do we find these two values? That is the transition probability from state two to the absorbing state four. And also, how do we find the transition probability from state three to the absorbing state four? So using the transition diagram, we can write the transition probability from state two to state four in this form, okay? So basically, this is going to be how we are going to figure it out. So the transition from this state to the absorbing state four, we can look at this from different um, possibilities. We can look at the transition probability from state two to state one, and then look at the transition from one to the absorbing state four. We can also look at the transition probability from state two to itself, and then the transition from state two to the absorbing state four. Or we can also look at the transition probability from state two to state three, and then the transition from state three to absorbing state four, or we can also look at the transition probability from state two direct to state four, and then look at the transition from state four to itself. So um, that's basically what we have here. And we know that once you input the values, this one is zero, so we have zero. And we know that the transition probability from state two to itself is not possible. Okay, you can see that we don't have that transition, so it is going to be zero. And we are here to get this, so we can maintain this. And we know that the transition probability from state two to four um, is going to be zero. We don't have that direct um, transition from state two to state four, so that probability will also be zero, okay? So once you work this one out, you obtain this result. And we can also express the transition probability from state three to the absorbing state four in this form, okay? 
So we know that we can look at the transition probability from state three to state one, and then the transition from state one to the absorbing state four. Or we can look at the transition probability from state three to state two, and then from state two to the absorbing state four. Or we can look at the transition probability from state three to itself, and then from three to four. Or we can look at the transition probability from state three to four, and then the transition from this state to itself, okay? So that is basically what we have here. So once you input the values, you obtain this result, okay? And which will equal to that. So I want to substitute equation one into equation two. So this is equation one in place of this, okay? In place of this, we want to replace it with this, okay? So once we do that, we obtain this result. You group like terms, you have this. And then you make this the subject, you have this. So this is going to be the transition probability from state three to the absorbing to the absorbing state four. Okay. And you can also get the transition probability from state um two to the absorbing state four by replacing it. Okay. So once you do this, you also get this result. All right. So now we are going to have a vector of transition probabilities. Okay. Or we are going to have a, a vector of absorption probabilities. Okay. So now we 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 have the transition probability from state one to the absorbing state. We also have the transition probability from state um, two to the absorbing state four. We also have the transition probability from state three to the absorbing state four. We also have the transition probability from state four to itself, okay? That's the absorbing state to itself. All right, so now in general, the vector of absorption probabilities can be obtained using this equation below, that is equation three, okay? So once you know this, you can find the absorption or hidden probabilities, all right? So now to the mean absorption or hidden times, okay? So uh, we know how to find absorption probabilities. So how do we find the expected time that it, it will take us to move from this state to the absorbing state, either one or state four? At what time will, are we going to move from this state to the absorbing state, or are we going to move from this state to the absorbing state? That's basically what we want to find. In other words, we want to know how long will it take to get from a particular state to the absorbing state on average, okay? That's basically what we want to find. So let's define M index IA to be the expected time into the chain hit or which set A, which is going to be a class of absorbing states, given that we, are, we, we start from state I at the initial time, where tau index A is the time taken before reaching or hitting the class of absorbing state for the first time, okay? So if there's any possibility that the chain never reaches the class of absorbing state, then from I, then you can write, um, you can say that the expected time, then we can say that the expected time into the chain um, hit or reach the class of absorbing state is going to be infinite, okay? All right. So in general, the vector of expected hidden times is going to be the non-negative solution to the following equation. So we can use equation four to get the mean absorption or hidden times. Okay. All right. So let's try and take an example using the state transition diagram in Figure six. We want to find the expected time to absorption. Suppose the chain starts from state two. Okay. So we are still using this. And state transition diagram. We want to find the expected time to absorption. Suppose the chain starts from state two. So let's take a look at the solution. Starting from state two, we wish to find the expected time to reach the class of absorbing state. So we're actually looking for um, the expected time to absorption starting from state two, okay? <clears throat> All right. So using equation four, we can deduce that the um, expected time to absorption starting from state one and the expected time to absorption starting from state four is going to be zero because state one and state four, they belong to this class, okay? So now how do we get the expected time to absorption starting from state two? We can express this in this form. 
So let's take a look at the transition diagram. So I want to find the expected time to absorption starting from state two. So we can look at the transition part. This is one of the absorbing states and also have another one here. So we can look at the transition probability from state two to state one, which is the absorbing state, and then look at the expected time to absorption starting from state one, okay? And you can also look at the transition probability from state two to state three, and then look at the expected time to absorption starting from state three, okay? So that is basically what we have here, okay? So we know that um, this is zero, right? This one is zero, so we can replace it here. And we are here to um, basically get this, all right? So we can have this expression there. All right, so now how do we get this? We can also express the expected time to absorption starting from state three in this form. So let's take a look at the transition diagram. So we want to look at the expected time to absorption. We have two absorption states. We have one year and one year. So basically, we can look at the transition probability from state three to state two, and then look at the expected time to absorption starting from state two. Okay. Or we can also look at the transition probability from state three to state four, which is the absorbing state, and then look at the expected time to this absorbing class starting from um, state four, okay? So um, that is basically what we have here. So once you input the values, we know that this is going to be zero, so we have it here, and we are yet to get this, so we get this expression for this, okay? So I want to substitute equation five into equation six. So equation five, this is equation five. So into equation six. So in place of this, which is here, which is similar to this, in place of this, we want to put this value here in six, okay? So once we do that, we obtain this result. And once you work out, you obtain this result, you group like things, you have this, and you make this the subject, you obtain this result, okay? So we can also find this, which is going to give us two. So this follows that the expected time to absorption, right, starting from state two at initial time is going to be two steps, okay? Which is very quite simple to do. All right, so um, this will be a trial question. I'll leave the solution in the description of this video so you can check it out. Please, if you find well into this tutorial video, don't forget to subscribe if you have not. And thank you for watching.